how Saudi Arabia is turning desert into huge farmlands. Saudi Arabia is known for its vast deserts and extreme heat, but something incredible is happening there. The country is turning its dry, sandy land into huge green farmlands. This transformation is not only surprising, but also vital for a country that imports most of its food. By using new farming techniques and advanced technology, Saudi Arabia is making the desert bloom, growing crops and producing food in places where it seemed impossible. In this article, we'll explore how Saudi Arabia is achieving this remarkable change and what it means for the future of farming. But before starting the video, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. Saudi Arabia's Agricultural Revolution Saudi Arabia is a country where 95% of the land is scorching desert, covered with sand dunes and barren, infertile soil. Despite this, the country's become a surprising agricultural power. Even though it's one of the few nations in the world without any permanent rivers and receives just 4 inches of rain per year, Saudi Arabia has managed to export vegetables, fruits and dairy products to countries around the globe. Remarkably, in the 1990s, Saudi Arabia was even one of the world's largest exporters of wheat. If we take a closer look, we can see something quite astonishing happening across the Saudi desert. Scattered throughout the vast empty landscapes are large circular patches of greenery. These aren't just small gardens, but enormous farmland spread out across the country, even in the heart of the desert. These green circles are actually center pivot irrigation farms, a key part of Saudi Arabia's agricultural success. Saudi Arabia's agricultural projects are massive in scale, demonstrating a significant investment in farming technologies that help make the desert bloom. By using advanced irrigation techniques like center pivot systems, the country's found ways to grow food in areas that were once thought impossible to cultivate. A massive transformation. In 1961, Saudi Arabia had only about 11,400 square kilometers of arable land, which made up just 0.5% of the country. Fast forward to 2016, and that number's grown significantly to nearly 35,000 square kilometers, more than triple the amount of fertile land compared to 60 years ago. To put that into perspective, 35,000 square kilometers is larger than entire countries like Belgium and Armenia. Over the past six decades, Saudi Arabia has successfully transformed 24,000 square kilometers of desert into fertile farmland. How Water Transforms Saudi Arabia's Deserts into Farmland Saudi Arabia's transformation of its desert into fertile land is truly remarkable, especially considering the 24,000 square kilometers of desert land, an area larger than Slovenia and nearly twice the size of Qatar, has been made productive. This raises an important question. How did a country with only 1.5% of arable land manage not only to grow agricultural products, but also to become an exporter? When we think of Saudi Arabia or the broader Middle East, what often comes to mind are images of scorching sun, endless sand dunes, and one of the harshest climates on Earth. But it wasn't always this way. About 10,000 years ago, the Arabian Peninsula was a land of rolling grasslands, forests and jungles, nourished by torrential monsoon rains, much like modern-day tropical Southeast Asia. Water has been at the heart of Saudi Arabia's agricultural transformation. The key to their success lies in how they've sourced and managed water in a region that lacks natural rivers and receives minimal rainfall. Their ability to tap into ancient groundwater reserves and apply advanced irrigation technologies has enabled them to turn vast stretches of desert into fertile farmlands. The question remains, how did Saudi Arabia secure such large quantities of water in a region that's known for its scarcity? To support large-scale farming, engineers in Saudi Arabia tapped into ancient river channels that are now buried beneath the sand. These channels hold what's known as fossil water, which has been trapped in underground aquifers as deep as one kilometer below the surface. This water was stored during past periods of wetter climates, including glacial epochs that occurred between 10,000 and 2 million years ago. Center Pivot Irrigation 
It's crucial for farmers to save water and energy when irrigating crops, especially as these resources become more limited. To do this, good irrigation management is needed, and one of the best methods is center pivot irrigation. This technique was invented by a farmer named Frank Zyback in Colorado and is considered one of the most effective ways to improve water distribution on farms. As the name suggests, center pivot irrigation works by rotating in a circular pattern around a central point, distributing water evenly. These systems can be used to apply fertilizer, chemicals, and herbicides, making them versatile and efficient. Center pivot irrigation has been in use for decades and is known for increasing crop yields while using less water, compared to methods like flood irrigation. Saudi Arabia has been using this method for about 50 years. However, despite its success, the country's nearly drained a massive underground water reserve known as an aquifer that was as large as a lake. Since the Arabian Peninsula gets very little rainfall, the underground water reserves called aquifers are not being replenished. The winds that come from the west carry almost no moisture after traveling over northern Africa. Most of Saudi Arabia's rain falls on the western mountains, known as the Arabian Shield, and the water flows back into the sea without being used. Because of this, Saudi Arabia is facing a serious depletion of its water reserves, which puts its agriculture at risk. To avoid this crisis, Saudi Arabia started buying agricultural land in other countries, like the United States, Argentina, Indonesia, and several African nations. In fact, Saudi Arabia is now one of the largest buyers of farmland abroad. However, there are some natural solutions that can help turn deserts into farmland. As we mentioned earlier, most of the rain in Saudi Arabia falls on the western slopes of the Arabian Peninsula. There was an interesting experiment in the Al Baida area of western Saudi Arabia, similar to how African countries are building a great green wall to stop desertification. One of the main reasons fertile land turns into desert is overgrazing by animals, which damages the soil. Historically, nomadic Bedouin tribes roamed the Al Baida area. However, Due to urbanization and modernization, these tribes were required by law to settle in one place. This led to overgrazing, turning once fertile land into barren desert. Two Saudi princesses visited the area, saw the problem, and started a development project led by Stanford permaculture expert Neil Spackman and Harvard bioethicist Mona Hamdi. For eight years, Spackman lived with the Bedouin communities, working to restore the land. They built rock terraces, check dams, and shallow ditches to trap rainwater and create streams. They also constructed shelters for bats and pigeons, and planted drought-resistant trees to mimic natural ecosystems. However, after seven years, the project funding was cut, and a two-year drought killed many of the trees, putting the project at risk. But in 2018 and 2019, rain returned flowing through the terraces and dams, bringing life back to the area. The once desolate desert was transformed into a lush, green savanna. The Al Baida area is part of a larger pattern of watersheds along Saudi Arabia's west coast, where 90% of fresh water flows into the Red Sea during floods, without being captured for use. For example, in the Al Laith area, a single flood could provide enough water to irrigate 130 million trees for three years. The Albina project shows how desert land can be turned into fertile savanna by managing and harvesting flood water. If this approach were applied to the entire west coast of Saudi Arabia, which spans over 30 million acres, 121,000 square kilometers, it could transform a region larger than the combined size of the Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland, and Denmark into agricultural land. Such a project would require billions of dollars in time, but it could increase Saudi Arabia's agricultural capacity by six times and boost its GDP by three to five percent. Additionally, by reversing desertification, the soil would trap carbon gases, helping to fight climate change. Saudi Arabia currently relies on desalination plants for fresh water, but desalinating seawater is energy intensive, often using coal and natural gas which release carbon gases. However, with modern membrane-based reverse osmosis technology 
powered by nuclear energy, desalination could be more sustainable. Nuclear power is a clean and reliable energy source, and it could provide the energy needed for desalination without harming the environment. Making the land green requires water, and getting water means using desalination plants. To make those plants more eco-friendly, we need green energy, like nuclear power. Everything is connected in this process. If you're interested in learning more, I've listed related videos in order, so check them out and leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new content. I've got more videos planned for next month, and I hope you'll enjoy them. Have a great day.